I welcome Manas. Thanks a lot for taking out time and conducting this session for Pragmatic Leaders. Uh, so welcome everyone to this product talk series by Pragmatic Leaders. We are glad to see you all here. Before we start today's session, I would like to take a moment and introduce you about Pragmatic Leaders. At Pragmatic Leaders, you all are part of global family of aspirational professionals who proactively help each other and are invested in each other's career growth. Uh, at Pragmatic Leaders, we offer pay after placement program in product management for working professionals who are looking to transition into product roles and for professionals who are looking to upskill in product management. For more, more details, you can check out our website. I have already added link uh, in the chat section. With that note, let's begin the session. Uh, so today we have Manas with us. As we all know, he is working with Samsung right now. And he has more than a decade of experience in spanning e-commerce, digital health, consulting, and technology domains. And today we'll be discussing gamification with him. So yes, welcome and thank you, Manas, for joining. Thanks, Piyush. Thanks. Thanks for the intro. Um, so, uh, so Piyush, just to understand, so how uh, how are we going to do this? We're going to first do a presentation and then the Q&A or right. you want to keep it open in some ways? Uh, I think we can start with the presentation session and uh, sure. if we have few questions, we can so, go through them. Otherwise, yeah, we can maybe we'll after. take a pause in between and look at some of the questions yes. and then sure. again, uh, continue that. Uh, so this will probably take 30, 35 minutes. Uh, also, uh, because I can't see a lot of people, I really don't know how, uh, you know, the feedback from the user. So if you feel at any time that I'm going too slow or too fast, please let me know so that, you know, I can change the pace or, you know, slow down or go fast based on that. Yes, definitely. Uh, sure. Okay, I will get started. I'll share my screen. Good evening, everyone, and good morning to people who are in other time zones. And let's get started. So, uh, so this is uh, today. It's we will essentially discuss about gamifications, gamification, but uh, from a product manager's point of view. So, uh, gamification can be discussed from different perspectives, but this is primarily. Uh, from a product manager, product leader's point of view. So that's how uh, I'll be doing this. Uh, again, a uh, few things that before uh, we get onto it, so please uh, understand that whatever I you know, discuss today uh, is my interpretation of what I have learned. Uh, so please take it with a pinch of salt. Please trust and maybe trust and verify at your end. Uh, with that uh, in mind, let's get on with it. So uh, just, to, just to share a little bit about myself, uh, I'm an engineer with an MBA, nothing unusual about it. Uh, however, uh, you know, over a period of time, I have developed interest in uh, what we today call applied psychology, behavioral science, gamification. So they're all kind of related terms, related stuff that, uh, you know, has gone grown importance over a period of time. So that's that's been something which is my interest area last uh, one to two years. Uh, currently, I work uh, at Samsung e-commerce uh, in India. Uh, previously, I have I had worked with in tech dev in consulting uh, uh, startups like Jibong and few digital health you know funded healthcare startups. And then, uh, as of, as of now, I'm in Samsung. Uh, by nature, I'm an introvert, I'm a reader, and a big Big Bang Theory fan. So maybe we should talk about that sometime in the future also. Uh, with that, uh, we will get on to the uh, agenda for today. So this is what the next hour uh, would look like. Uh, we will talk about games. So what is it about games that makes it interesting? What is it about games that make us play uh, any games in general. Uh, from there, we will try to understand and discuss what is gamification uh, and what is gamification from a product manager's point of view. Uh, we will also discuss some of the behavior models. So this is essentially theory behind the, uh, but I think that is really important to understand the basics. Uh, so, and then probably we'll have a better grip of the subject. Uh, then we'll get on to the 
main thing uh, of today's uh, presentation, which is the Octalysis framework. Octalysis framework is nothing but one more model, which we will talk about in detail. Uh, we will analyze an experience uh, using Octalysis. Uh, in this entire uh, presentation, what I have done is I've tried to pick and choose experience from Indian context so that it is uh, understood better so that we can connect to it better. But in some of the cases, it is not there. Hence, I have stick to, uh, you know, stuck to other uh, examples. Uh, and finally, the Q&A. Uh, so what we won't be doing today is designing an experience from scratch, which is a five step, very elaborate process using Octalysis. Maybe we'll park it for some other time. Okay, so uh, so Piyush, any, uh, anything else that you want to talk, you want to share in between? Uh, all okay with the... Uh, yes, I think yes, yes, yes. everything is fine. We can continue. Okay. Great. So, uh, so let's start with games, right? So essentially why people play games. Uh, we have all played uh, in games in the past we are still playing games it could be it could be in the real world it could be in the virtual world and uh, the, the the thing is everyone is a gamer right and the question the question today is the question that i want to address here is that why people play games you invest so much of your time uh, if you take that time and probably invest in something else probably you have you would have gotten something in return maybe uh, you know if you look at look at your uh, school life or college probably would have gotten better marks, right? Still, you didn't choose to do that. You chose to play a game uh, with your time. You invested your time that way. You had a reward in front of you, uh, which is which is better marks, better rank, better score. Uh, however, you played the game because you liked it. So the question is, why did we why did we invest our time uh, doing something which apparently didn't lead to anything? apparently didn't lead to any reward as such. And uh, also uh, if you are uh, looking at the current gaming industry, and this is only, this is only the uh, mobile and the PC online gaming industry, which is worth $160 billion in 2020. The COVID gave it a huge push. Uh, however, think of it that we are paying, customers are paying uh, $160 billion to the gaming companies in order to play a game, in order to invest their time in it. Instead, they could have done something rewarding, which they are not doing. They have chosen this. And the question is why, right? So let's try to uh, unravel that. Okay, thank you for the comment. Okay, so let's try to unravel what are, what are there in a game. And uh, you can think of while you are, you know, while we're talking about it, you can think of any game that you like and you will most probably find all of these elements in a in a game that you like you can think for of a of a game of cricket uh, the ipl is coming soon uh, or you can think of any game that you connect with right it could be a, a game a, a real a real life game meaning could be a cricket or a football or a indoor game could be chess scrabble anything right so a game has score right so you have a score which tells you where you are in the game uh, it tells you who is doing good, who is doing not so good. Uh, it gives you a sense of progression that, okay, and it gives you a sense, gives you a feedback that, okay, you have played this shot and this is what you get, right? You get a four run. And okay, the second thing is a game has rules. Uh, without rules, uh, the rules create constraints, the rules create boundary, the rules create uh, a way of strategizing the game through, right? So if, because there are certain rules, uh, in cricket, there is a slog over, right? So you play a game, you play a 50 over cricket in a certain way because of the certain rules that people have put in, building restrictions that they put in in the first six, 10 overs or so. Uh, it's, uh, any game is also a game of skill. Uh, the, the, it could be a variation, meaning uh, in some, some game, there is a lot of skills required, some game it is less of skill required, but there is a sense, there is a level of skill that is required to play a game. Uh, also a, a game is a is a is there's also a lot of luck factor or a chance factor and that makes a game so much more interesting that makes a game turn around in a in a in a matter of seconds a game is also social uh, social in most of the games that we play uh, even if it is a single player game uh, it, you are still playing with someone else uh, and 
you know even if it is it is a, a mobile game you are playing with your friend uh, it's a team game anyway it's social and the last but not the least it's a glory right so if the winning is a glory and also uh, you you could also give up your uh, your trophy to someone based on certain occasions and that's how you also get to glory so these are some of the elements of the game and there could be more but uh, i have chosen this for the for our discussion today what does these elements do in a game right uh, we have what it does is it creates engagement it creates engagement for the players it creates engagement for the audience if there is any in a, in a game uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to products uh, it creates retention uh, also when it comes to games it creates retention because there are many games where people are playing for years right uh, there are also experiences where people are so if you are a customer of say amazon you are a customer of amazon for so long so so high amount of retention is 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 seen and finally you know a revenue for whoever is whoever is running the game uh, there is revenue at the end of it so uh, this is so now from games we are moving to gamification uh, this is dilbert's you know i always think that dilbert anything which is to do with jargon you all you should always go to dilbert and see what what is there uh, dilbert is talking about uh, with respect to gamification so uh, essentially what it what it talks about is that let's the the suggestion is from the hr is that let's give badges ribbons and and some awards for uh, instead of appraisal which is which is also a some part of a reward and uh, because it doesn't create value and if you see this it doesn't create value it doesn't create value for the employees as such and uh, so that's how uh, this is an this is an irony of uh gamification implementation of gamification where we think that we can just slap in some badges slap in some points slap in a leaderboard etc and then create an experience it doesn't work that way and uh, that is a note of caution as we as we move ahead so uh so a lot of uh, gamification uh, definition you know you would see where it talks about adding game elements or game mechanics in your product and you achieve gamification so uh, just to be clear what is what is a game mechanic so uh, as we were saying in the previous slide so points badges is a uh, you know or ribbons which we are talking which we which we saw is is a game mechanic right so and uh, this is a game mechanic this is called a game mechanic because uh, it comes from the world of games right you take those and you add into a product so you are adding game mechanics in your product and uh, the the thing is a definition sometimes says that you add game mechanics in your product and you achieve gamification however there is there is a lot of nuance to that i think there is a lot of nuance to this definition uh, and i would believe i would want to take it this way that you add game mechanics in your product to act to affect user behavior again i still think that is not complete though you have affected user behavior you are uh, taken that one more step uh, i would like to believe the definition that i would uh, you know refer to is you add game mechanics to your product to affect user behavior in order to achieve business metrics so when you are thinking of gamification don't start with gamification you always start with uh, business metrics because those are your primary primary goal and then you start thinking about user behavior or desired actions which can lead to those uh, business metrics so a desired action could be Uh, for a, a very uh, e retail perspective adding a product to a cart right so that's a desired action which would lead to a sale uh, and then you start thinking about okay if that is the user behavior or desired action what would motivate my user to uh, what would be the motivation for my user to add product to a cart and then once you have uh, once you have that sorted then you think of game mechanics that what kind of game mechanics would create uh create those motivation for the user to take those actions and then finally you uh, arrive at a right business metric so game mechanics uh, you know just so and this is an important take away from today's uh discussion if you're not uh, taking away anything probably this is the a place to this is the thing to take away game mechanics is not gamification uh, gamification is much more than that uh, also adding games in your product is not gamification uh there are uh, you know you would see people have added games uh, in their product uh, that creates engagement for sure 
uh, people have added fantasy games, uh, but the product has nothing to do with the fantasy games. That creates people spend time in that, but they're not any way connected to the, your business matrix. They're not any way connected to the user desired actions, and hence games is not adding games in your product is not gamification. So essentially, gamification is all about human focused design, right? Uh, you look at so you start. and there are a lot of terminologies who, which if you you know get into this you will start hearing a lot of terminologies you would hear about applied psychology uh, you will talk people will talk about behavioral science people talk about behavioral economics uh, all of these come together also people talk about gamification so all of these comes together uh, to create an experience so don't look at gamification when you are implementing uh, or thinking about gamification into your product look at it overhaul overall look at the you know uh, user keep the user in your mind keep the business metrics in mind keep the keep the user motivation in mind and then design uh, then design the rest of it okay so now yeah so one of the question was is the session inspired by the works of uh, ukai chao yes that's that's true we are talking about optalysis so that's uh that's what uh, ukai Ch chao has been propagating for quite some time that's true uh thanks for more comments gamification adds stickiness to the product absolutely design thinking human centered design absolutely business metrics example um uh, yeah so any any metrics that you are looking at so you are trying to look at uh you know increasing time spent on your uh, on your app or website if that that's a metric that you are trying to look at uh you are trying to look at increasing say subscription of a particular subscription product that's a business metric yeah metrics like reducing return return percentage of orders yes absolutely uh you could you could take all of that as as you know uh metrics to improve or to work upon using gamification manas uh, just one quick question i hope it's okay to uh, speak questions as well or should we use chat yes yes you can speak please please Please, it's okay. Uh, just, just a small query. Uh, you mentioned game mechanics is not gamification. What, what are we exactly referring to when we say game mechanics? Yes. So, uh, so game mechanics is uh, what has happened over a period of time is that uh, people look at games uh, and they take up uh, a specific mechanic in a game. So, let me give you an example. So, uh, so there are there are games, and if you have played a lot of games, you will see. there is a there is a mechanic called uh, say a group quest right so in a group quest what happens is you collaborate with others for a quest and the quest could be anything right quest could be a reward a uh, quest could be you are uh, fighting another uh, another army so you group together uh, people come together and then uh, you know then fight or then try to get the reward right so that group quest is a game mechanic similarly Uh, a leaderboard is a game mechanic so what is a leader i mean a very simple game mechanic is leaderboard so leaderboard is essentially suppose uh, let's take an example that uh, uh, for a particular company they want to run a sale for a month of a period of a month and they create a leaderboard that whoever buys more stuff gets up on the leaderboard and then uh, gets to win say whatever uh, a large reward so so you take up a lead you put up a leaderboard on your website or on your app where constantly people see who is who are the top 10 and you can see where you are right so so that motivates your behavior so a leaderboard is 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 a game mechanic for example did i uh, answer that yes manas i was uh, simultaneously also googling it so that makes sure. sense yeah 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 google always is better okay so uh, with that uh, let's uh, look at the behavior model so behavior model says essentially uh, some amount of theory uh, but we will try and look at the model and then try to look at where we can put this in our product so uh, bj fox behavior model uh, this is one of the most common models and lot of models uh, in future and lot of people who have written lot of and contributed to this field uh, take uh, inspiration from this model and this is this is very very uh, basic in terms of uh, understanding what behavior is so according to bj fog uh, behavior happens when you have 
motivation ability and triggers at the same moment uh, to be very clear uh, trigger has the word trigger has now been uh, removed and he has added uh, instead of trigger he has added prompts but uh, for all practical purposes you know it's the same thing so trigger is uh, is a, it's a prompt it's a cue whatever you call it right and what he talks about is motivation ability and prompt or mo motivation ability and trigger coming together to make a behavior happen and uh, the you know to understand whatever what is motivation and what is ability he has he himself has given a very good example uh, in short uh, what he says is a phone rings but you did not take the call right so and what could be the reason that you did not take the call uh, one set of reason could be that you were away from the device you were away showering you were away in your kitchen you couldn't you couldn't come when the phone was ringing the second set of uh, reasons could be that yes you saw the phone ring but the phone was from some number with, where you didn't want to talk it was probably a spam call it was probably call from a from someone whom who you don't want to talk to at this point maybe it's from your boss so uh, the first thing is about the first is ability you did not have the ability uh, to attend to the call right so that's ability uh, motivation is yes you had the ability you looked at looked up the looked up on your device but there was no motivation to answer your call and the trigger is the ring right so that's that's a, a very uh, uh, you can say a mind map to help you always remember what is ability what is motivation and what is a trigger so now uh, uh, if you see if you see this thing what what it essentially talks about is uh, if your motivation is high and it is uh, your ability of doing that activity is easy then obviously a behavior happens so that is the top right corner if the motivation is low and it is very hard to do nothing happens i mean even if there are a lot of triggers nothing happens so uh, to give you an example you might be getting a lot of triggers notification from so many brands today right so many apps but uh, you you don't act at all the reason is uh, low motivation and maybe you know low motivation and maybe hard to do activities which club come together so that there is no behavior that happens and uh, also you know uh, one more interesting thing that you know he what he has to, so there is also a concept of a habit right so behavior when when you do the do a particular behavior over a period of time it converts into a habit so uh, so what uh, bj fogg talks about habit forming is that and if you really want to actually imbibe a habit you should look at uh, uh, easy to do stuff uh, he has written also a book called tiny habits there is another book by uh, i think james clear called atomic habits uh, largely they talk about the similar concept and from bj fogg's model so you take up something which is very easy to do at this uh, at the onset you have very you have low motivation you really don't have high motivation to get started if you really want to build something take up something easy to do which is on this this part of the so which is right uh, bottom corner right and as you constantly start doing this activity which is very easy to do maybe you want to start exercise maybe just give 5 minutes of walking every day right for example uh, once you do that you feel a sense of accomplishment right so you are able to do this activity so then once you sense feel a sense of accomplishment your motivation goes up right and once you once you do that then you move up this uh, orange line that you see right so you take up something which is harder to do and uh, right and because your motivation is high now you are able to actually do that and as and then further your you know you feel accomplished you feel better doing that you go further up this orange line and finally you are able to do a lot more which is an activity which is hard to do because your motivation has grown from low to high during that time so now you are able to say go for a one hour gym session uh, and you have and if you build this way uh, you can still go for a one hour gym session one day but if you are if you are if you are building this way you will it you will retain it as a habit and you will not fall off so that's the uh, uh, you know behavior uh, model all about Uh, when it comes to product uh, development or product design you could think of ability about ability anything right so if i have to uh, if i am talking about uh, say a fitness fitness app right and uh, i am supposed to do everything something every morning as a part of that uh, 
behavior so so uh, when you are mapping that user behavior when you are trying to map the user journey that he gets up in the morning then he does this 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 three steps and then he goes and does this activity right so you would map up map this entire journey and you think of how can i make the make the how can i make my action right or the behavior that the person needs to user needs to take easier at the same time right can i remind rem, uh, remind people that yes you have to wake up at 6 can i uh, uh, you know uh, remind someone that yes please keep your um, keep keep your shoes and your uh, you know jogging uh, tracks whatever uh, in place before you go before you go to sleep the uh, before you go to sleep the previous night so you can think of how do you make it easy so another very good example of reducing uh, making easy to do in terms of ability is netflix right netflix wants you to binge so Uh, and it wants you to move from episode to episode without as easy as, as easily as possible so it has taken off the next button right so you don't have to click on that button you just wait and it moves on to the next episode and the, by making the, by doing that they have i mean they have made it very easy to move on from episode 1 to episode 2 right and you are then you are getting into the binge mode for uh, uh, netflix so that's how and motivation is something we will anyway talk about motivation the you know a lot in the next few you know slides in this entire session so we'll come to how how we how can we increase motivation or what leads to higher motivation and what are the factors that we can uh, build into our product to in, to have higher motivation i have covered this okay so next we'll talk about flow theory so uh, very quickly uh, flow theory is something which which talks about that uh, if you there is a challenge on the x y axis and you see skills on the x axis so as you increase your skills if the challenge is not really commensurate with the skill you will be in a bore, boredom phase and, and and this is very common right and we all connect with that so if you're in a work environment where you think that you really can do a lot but then there is not enough a great work you all all you see is grunt work for you to do you will feel bored at bored at work you will feel less engaged at work uh, similarly if you are thrown in in a in a situation where your current skills don't really match up and the challenges look extremely high you will get into an anxiety mode so both boredom and anxiety are, are not great from a user behavior or uh, user perspective right so both causes problem if if your product causes anxiety or boredom so the you know the right part or if you see this white part right so that's it that's called flow channel the reason why it is called flow channel is uh, and and what uh, you know what it essentially means is that when the user is as the skills increase the challenges increase the user is in a state of flow so state of flow is when the user is engaged the user is feeling accomplished and uh, the the challenges are commensurate with my skills so that's so and then but how do we what do we do with this flow theory right it's great so how do we apply it in the product design uh, interestingly i think we uh, we have been using this in our product design uh, so uh, for a user there are four phases right uh, uh, in a when you talk about gamification uh, we talk about four phases the users are in with respect to the product so user starts with a discovery phase which is the user is trying to figure out should i really connect with your product should i really download your app etc then he goes on to the onboarding phase where user first time interacts your product you download your app he interacts your app with your app and then gets on to a scaffolding and end game phase so scaffolding is essentially user knows all about the app he comes to your app on a whatever regular interval he uses your app uh, and he is very much used to and he knows the knows your product and the 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 last stage is where the user is essentially getting into a stage where he knows everything and there is not enough challenge for it and it's the end game where the user would essentially exit your product right so uh, let's come to onboarding right so onboarding what do you want a user to do during onboarding right you don't want the user to go through a very complicated experience you want the user to go through a very simple experience a easy experience and feel accomplished about it right so that is motivation goes up right so please you know so all these all are also all of these theories are related in some way and uh, you will once you kind of 
understand this better and go go through it on, on at your end you will see that they are somewhere related so as you increase your skills your motivation uh, you know motivation goes up so uh, during onboarding i want the user handhold the user take him through an experience which is easy which is short and make him make him feel accomplished right so low skills because he doesn't know the product uh, small challenge right and that's how he accomplishes the activity and that's how he feel accomplished and then he's ready to move on to the next uh, next step or next set of screens however you might you might want to uh, do that so so that's how you think of flow theory and product design and uh, this is uh, the the hook model for habits so this is a very common uh, uh, common model which uh, product designers uh, look at and this is written with product design in mind uh, this is written this is by neer ayal and he has written a book also on this which is called hooked uh, so this is this model talks about trigger see again you know trigger is is a word which was again there in in bj fogg's model right action is nothing but behavior uh, variable reward so so reward essentially causes that motivation right uh, why variable we will come to it uh, when we discuss octalysis so in gen, uh, in detail so the variable word reward is quite important the word variable uh, and then finally an investment so uh, to take an example of facebook or whatsapp so uh, facebook sends you a prompt uh, or a trigger uh, because your friend has uploaded a photo you go ahead and you take an action you like your friend's photo uh, uh, what you get in get in reward is uh, you know you might you might so the reward essentially with respect to facebook is you see a next set of posts right on your facebook feed so so and variable is because you really don't know what what is the next image that you're going to see on your on your feed uh, that's the variable reward and the investment is the like or a photo upload that you do so with investment your affinity towards the product goes up that's why investment is important uh also uh, triggers are he has mentioned triggers are external and internal internal is when the product is not sending you a notification or a email or anything internal trigger is when it is essential and essentially an habit and uh, you are bored you think of opening up facebook right or you think of opening up gmail so that's an internal trigger Uh, your boredom is an internal trigger in this case so that's the that's all about uh, the behavior models at least for tonight at this point i would like to pause and if there are any questions because now we will get on to i wanted to check how we are doing with the time okay i think we are running very questions at this point because then we'll have to run really fast to complete this okay so uh, okay so let's talk about octalysis as a framework so octa what octalysis talks about or states in short is that so there are uh, eight core drives which drives behavior or which drives which are motivating core drives which essentially motivates people and uh, what i have found is that this this is essentially uh, very comprehensive in terms of mapping uh, uh, or uh, affecting user behavior uh, hence hence we talk about octalysis uh, a little bit in detail in this so what you see is Uh, please ignore uh, in this what you see written on the out, outer thing which is in small the fonts so look at the uh, uh, look at the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 and these are the eight core drives we will go one by one so essentially it states that you need one or more drives to affect behavior if there are none of the core drives there is no behavior that is happening uh, in any experience uh, and it could be a product experience it could be a uh, uh, you know a real life experience anything uh, so so with that in mind let's get on to the uh, code drives very quickly uh, the first code drive is epic meaning and calling so so uh, epic meaning and calling is essentially ab about doing something which is bigger than ourselves right which is uh giving up yourself for a cause so for example wikipedia where the editors edit uh you know every you know every day they come back from work and they edit whatever number you know, for 2 2 to 3 hours they correct stuff they create new uh, create new pages for wikipedia for free no one is paying them to do that but they do that because they believe 
they need to protect human human knowledge they need to make uh, protect human knowledge they need to make human knowledge free they need to make human knowledge unbiased and that's why they do it so and that's the and that is what this whole and that's what they are calling and their calling is driving this behavior no one is paying them to do that there is no reward at the end of the day uh, similarly i mean without getting into patagonia uh, you would see lot of these uh, epic meaning and calling in branding exercises uh, and marketing exercises right where uh, you would uh, a brand would try try to associate themselves with a larger cause and patagonia is one of the examples some do it very well they they merge it with their business and some in many cases you see a shallow uh, implementation of it and that's where the problem is a lot of products you don't see that uh, this thing uh, but just a uh, slapping over a narrative with your product may not always work uh, but but that's but that's that's the probably a first way to think about it that can we build a narrative in our product where people find more meaning while they're doing while they are doing this activity right so that's how you can think about epic meaning and calling when you talk about or talk about building it into your product uh you can uh, the one good example is ways you can look at ways uh, as a example at a, in your leisure time uh second thing is uh, cd2 is co drive 2 it is about accomplishment and development right so uh, also look back to the game right so you can if you look back to the elements that we talked about uh, in a game uh all of these are connected right accomplishment and development is uh, essentially about you your a mastery in something right you you are you are getting skillful in something and that is making you accomplished and that is making you do that behavior again and again so a very uh, you know interesting uh, and this is one of the easiest way to implement and you see it all over the place which is you see points you see badges you see stickers this is the example from paytm uh, you see these stickers you get you get if you do if you pay someone you get these paytm first points uh, on the right there's an example from linkedin so it says it it clearly states that your profile strength is inter intermediate it shows a very nice uh, horizontal bar color coded to tell you that where you are uh, in terms of your progression and very uh, very nicely done it tells you that if you have to move from level 1 to whatever level sorry level 4 to level 5 this is what you can do so uh, it shows a shows your current status so that's your motivating factor and then it gives a cta right which tells you add skills so if you see lot of design if you're thinking about forget about you know gamification games anything so lot of design if if you see this is how it was done that you have a action button which uh, we you know in gamification world people call it desired action desired action is add skills and you tell people why they should add skills right uh, why they should add skills because that will help them move from level 5 to level 6 and add and mind you add skill is important for linkedin because linkedin want you to add skill so that uh, obviously they want those data so that they can create a uh, better platform you know they can attract more recruiters etc etc right so for linkedin that's a this that's a business metric that they want more people to add skills to their uh, profile and adding skills is a becomes a desired action in this case and your uh, the profile strength the way they are showing that is the that is the game element in this case empowerment of creativity and feedback not many examples do you see on on this uh, however uh, uh, however so and i have not found too many products which does this in a in a good way uh, however you find it lot of it in games uh, for example chess so or for example so chess is where you have infinite options in order to Uh, you have infinite choice you can make your own choice and you can make your own strategy and you play that game uh, no one is dictating you and you are empowered to use your creativity but obviously you get feedback right that how you are doing uh, it's also a matter of choice uh, and same thing is same thing with say scrabble uh, if, if you think of think of uh, even for for example for cricket right so there's lot of strategy that goes behind uh, how you would play a game uh, the A lot of strategy would go behind how the pitch is today, how the weather is today, uh, whom to take, whom not to take, right? So there's a lot of things that is going on in the background, and also while you are playing, you are constantly changing your strategy based on the feedback that you get from the 
uh, from the score from the other teams so we'll come to it how uh, google uh, google pay had done some uh, something around choice uh, and in the last section uh, ownership and possession is essentially about our innate urge to accumulate stuff we accumulate stamps we accumulate cards uh, and uh, and also uh, so that's one one aspect of it which you can see an example of paytm holy campaign which is live right now uh, the other thing is if there is uh, if i have spent time building something it is more valuable to me than than anyone else right so uh, a personalization is a real good example uh, and when you are personalizing an experience when your experience is personalized by the product so you tend to be with that product also because this is yours right you you own the uh, playlist so discover weekly is a very good example of from spotify and and it causes higher stickiness so people tend to stick to stick to the platform because uh, it is personalized for me it is also called alfred effect so these are just names have nothing to do with that but uh, that causes people to stay stay uh, in the experience and not uh, exit out from the experience Uh, social influence and relatedness again this is very very simple uh, this is how facebook works right this is why facebook whatsapp all of these work all social media works uh, this is an example on strava where they have built a community where people are collaborating each other encouraging each other to do more right do more of the activity so please and again please uh, keep in mind that you want people to do certain activities certain actions and the collaboration is helping uh, helping the group to do those actions uh, and also competition right so competition also does the same thing and uh, it is also about your social influence how do i look to others right and that uh, makes me take those actions take those uh, you know complete that behavior uh, paper boat is again another example we would i mean in india people would know how they created a brand out of nostalgia uh, the drinks are not at all uh, of the same different obviously a different category so they kind of created a blue ocean out of and a large in the large market out of nowhere by associating their drinks with memories and because it is my memory because it is it reminds me of my uh, you know school days reminds me of that i am i feel more attached to the brand it's not an example of a digital product but we could create those uh, relatedness in a product also scarcity and impressions again this is this is what uh, we we talked uh, uh, yeah so this is scarcity and impressions is uh, essentially very simple right we crave for things that we can't have right uh, so a, a real uh, example was from a google diwali campaign this created so much of action so much of a uh, talk uh, so much of social uh, post etc around uh, scarcity of the rangoli stamp which Uh, which google had uh, you know launched during their diwali campaign 2019 so because it was so scarce uh, people are uh, people actually want to have it and that causes behavior to happen a limited time offer which is a very normal thing which you see that only because it is limited you you say that sale is only for two days right and because it is limited because it is scarce you are uh, more uh, inclined to take action you are more inclined to buying unpredictable and curiosity so this is essentially the variable reward that we talked about in uh, hook model uh, to get into this so uh, just uh, look at example of google pay scratch card cards versus paytm cashback which was there before so paytm is to say 10% cashback which was uh, which is not variable reward right google scratch cards were much more engaging because you really don't know when you are taking the action what you will get what value you will get how much you will get or whether you will get anything or not that causes a more obsessive behavior which is which is same as slot machines uh, which is same as uh, you know gambling as such and that uh, causes an obsessive behavior and user take actions loss and avoidance again is a uh, is a powerful one uh, but a simple one where uh, we hold on to our stuff and we don't want to lose something even if uh there is a chance of getting something in return uh meaning uh so if you see an example of uh, the duolingo 
uh, app and I, I saw someone talking about Duolingo also on the chat. Uh, so they have eight day streak. You have, you have spent eight days every day coming on to Duolingo and now they are saying that you are losing that eight day streak, right? And, and uh, just by stating it this way that you are going to lose your streak, they are monetizing their app. So uh, this is also, uh, and, and this is a powerful uh, motivator also because uh, this is also which causes people to stay in a, say a broken relationship. Just because you have, this is sunk cost prison, just because you have invested so much in a relationship, you would want to stay back in a relationship because it is, you have spent three, hour, three, three years of your time with that person, right? Uh, and also what this causes is you don't want to experience product to product, you don't want to move from product A to product B. So uh, you want to remain in your same status quo. Status quo is what uh, you want to be because you, you, you are afraid of losing what you have with product A. So that causes stickiness. But again, if you are, if you are from the product B side, you need to really think, how can I make people uh, move from product A to product B? And how, how would people, and what stronger motivation that I need to bring in so that people switch from uh, you know, A to B? And this is a, okay, the other example of script box, uh, anyway, I want to talk about it, but maybe for the sake of time, let's move on. So the script box, they have not implemented as loss and avoidance. They have implemented it more, uh, as of now, they have implemented it is more as a sense of progression. So this is, so it's the same game mechanic, which is streak design, but the, the on the left, this is about loss and avoidance. On the right, the experience that you see is essentially about sense of progress, which is CD2. Right, so they are in telling people that there's so much to go, and this is how the journey is laid out. So you are supposed to invest in your SIP in Jan, Feb, March, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So two different, same game element, but really targeting two different motivations. Uh, okay, so uh, the way Octalysis is there, right? So it is, it is put in a uh, octagon for a reason. So if you, uh, if you look at the left side of it, so first let's talk about left brain and right brain. So left brain is essentially extrinsic motivation on the right side is essentially, uh, forget the word brain, but that's really not important. So left and right, let's talk about that. Uh, so left is essentially a logical side of your brain. Uh, you are more uh, uh, encouraged by rewards. You are more encouraged by collecting stuff you are more encouraged by a physical reward at the end of the experience, right? Uh, you are doing something because you will get something at the end of it. That's the logical or the left, left side of the experience. And generally it is seen that it is very easy to build, uh, for people build, look at left side and build experiences around that. Uh, however, it can get boring and people might exit out of the product once you have got the reward. Uh, the right brain or the intrinsic, intrinsic behavior is, uh, motivation is what, that you don't need a reward at the end of it. You, the, 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 the journey is the reward, meaning you don't need a reward to hang out with your, hang out with your friends, right? So, uh, so there is no reward in that of it. You enjoy the experience of doing that activity. Uh, similarly with uh, empowerment, if you're playing a game, you're strategizing, you're enjoying that. You don't probably need a reward at the end of it. And the reward is not what is driving you to come again and play that game. Similar with unpredictability, uh, if you're playing with slot machines, uh, you, may not, you may not be getting anything out of it. You might be losing money at the end of your experience, but because this was unpredictable, you went on playing with it, right? So the experience is what is driving you uh, on, the, uh, on the right side of it. So, uh, so the reason why you're talking about this is when you're building experience, think of both left brain and right brain. Only one probably will not, uh, you know, help you create a experience which lasts longer. Uh, white hat, black hat, again, white hat is something where uh, the experience, it, it is a powerful, uh, powerful tools, a powerful motivators. However, there is no urgency in it, right? So you are not, you are okay, you are seeing some progress. Yes, you are, you are probably, you know, motivated to do something, but there is no urgency in terms of taking action. When it comes to black hat, which is the bottom thing, which is scarcity, avoidance, and unpredictability, there is, there is a lot of urgency for you to take an take take action. However, that this also causes a lot of obsession or addictive behavior. So uh, again, when you are thinking about experience, you can think about experience that 
you want people to do something urgently please use all the black hat uh, motivation but please marry it with white hat because people will feel obsessed people will feel guilty at the end of the uh, end of these and they will might exit out of the experience so when you are building think of both white hat and black hat gamification in your product uh, example of black hat we will okay we will probably see right now okay so uh, very quickly this is the google pay diwali campaign uh, just to you know recollect whatever we have discussed uh, if you see you will you will see all of these coming together a lot of things coming together in the google uh, pay campaign and this was very very popular and this really helped google to be uh, you know number one when it comes to uh, p2p upi payments i think so um so uh, if you see the google has a fixed reward which is 251 uh, you get rupees 251 once you collect five stamps uh, it also has a variable reward attached to it which is which you get a chance to win 1 lakh uh, it's it talks about just two stamps to go uh, it gives you a sense of progress that you have come this far and and a little bit of scarcity that okay you have to go two more uh and then there's a collection set right because you have to collect all these five stamps so 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 you are uh you are innately uh, you know encouraged to complete your set right unless it is complete you you are continuously doing that behavior to complete that set uh you, there is also a daily limit so there is a rule attached to it uh, there is some constraint so that you know there is a set of scarcity of it so you cannot just go on playing it uh, as much as possible and uh, you have a limit of daily limit so daily limit what happens is you come every day right you you do 15 times and the limit is over and you come every day so so that causes people to come come again and again on to the back to the experience uh, so it's also called appointment dynamics because you come you are having an appointment and you are coming every day to do that uh, here is a little bit of a choice strategy uh, not so much in terms of strategy but Uh, you have a choice that how do you want to make this uh, collection set yours so you can choose any of the three options uh, and that that creates a sense of empowerment that creates a sense of uh, choice that i am i am ready to take i am willing i am you know i am empowered to take any of the actions and people can if the experience is even much more uh, nuanced you can think of people can come up with strategies that how do i get these five stamps whether diwali scanner is the better way to do it or gifting or requesting is the better way to do it so people can come up with those strategies uh, again they have married social gifting uh, with uh, you know uh, with diwali obviously uh, connecting gifting season and gifting here uh, so this is a social influence at play uh, which is the which is code drive 5 in our case uh, very important call out and this is the last slide uh, is that if you see uh, the desired actions are in place so google, what google is stating that more you pay friends and businesses with google play the more you more stamps you collect right so finally all of that you are doing to get desired actions and desired actions from the user which will lead to the user uh, final business matrix right which is uh, more transactions through google pay upi uh, okay so this is how you would uh, you know look at an experience using uh, octalysis framework uh, so if you see i mean without i mean we have already discussed if you see this is predominantly black hat meaning you don't see a lot of meaning empowerment and accomplishment you see a lot of social influence unpredictability scarcity ownership uh, however this campaign was a very uh, the the problem with pure predominantly black hat design is it may not work in the long run however for google this campaign was only for a month or so during the diwali so it the experience even though it was predominantly black hat it really worked for them so so that's how that's how it is and i think that's it thank you thanks a lot manas uh, although we are already on time but uh, i think we can take two three questions so do you want to uh, want me to look at the questions which were Yes, there are a few questions I can see in chat section. Okay, you want to address those? Can you um, can you help me pick? Yes, sure. Those? We can start with this uh, Ranganathan's question. How can this be adopted in an e-commerce for both B two B and B two C? Okay, so I mean, if you look at um, 
if you look at uh, e-commerce as such, so uh, if you see even Amazon, right? So you see reviews as reviews, right? So reviews is essentially looking at uh, social influence and relatedness, right? What others are saying about the product that is motivating me to take, uh, choose a particular product or not choose a particular product, right? Uh, similarly, uh, uh, there is also a trend these days, which is, and which is trending and which is not even trending, which is, which has gone really huge uh, in, uh, in China, which is social commerce. And you're also seeing uh, certain, uh, certain, uh, companies doing that in a, in a good way uh, and influencer led commerce, right? So uh, you are buying a product because someone is saying, an uh, influencer is saying uh, that this is, this is what the product is about and they are influencing your decision of buying that product. So, so, uh, so, that's, so that's the way to look at it from a purely e-commerce uh, B2C, uh, B2C or a B2B point of view. And there are also, you could do a lot of, lot of hacks uh, while in the product design, right? So uh, you would see a lot of people put, uh, when you do a multi-step journey, if you look at uh, Airbnb or even if a checkout journey of a lot of e-com uh, websites, you would see multi-steps, right? So they would they would tell you that step one, do this, step two, and step three. So you are, you are told prior that there are three steps to go. And with every step, as you uh, as you are able to do one step, you see a green tick, right? So that's a sense of accomplishment that you get by doing a step and you are motivated to do the next step. So instead of uh, getting you all blind into the entire checkout experience, people want to put some steps to it to tell you that, yes, you know, the, that you have to accomplish three steps and you have accomplished one and only two more to go. So that's, that's also a sense of progression which people give uh, during a checkout journey. Also, there are other things where if you see there are uh, flags which says hot, the flag which says uh, low, stock alert, low stock alert. So these are essentially creating a sense of scarcity that you know, uh, there is low stock. So please go ahead and, uh, please go ahead and you know, purchase this because it, we will very soon run out of it. So those are the hacks people use uh, with respect to uh, a very e-retail experience. I hope this helps Ranganathan. Uh, so there are a few questions around uh specific industry specific questions how can we implement gamification in this since we are short on time i think we can skip this for now uh, next one is from vishwa what kind of drivers would you suggest for a b2b app made for cxos to analyze business data business goal is equals to increase in site consumption on the go and learn what users want internal trigger is high b2b app made for cxos to analyze business data so is this like a reporting? I'm really not sure what is the experience. CXOs, I understand. Uh, yeah, it's more of a business inside consumption. Yeah, uh, hi. Yes, please. Yeah, hi, Mars. Uh, so this is more of a business uh, inside consumption. So maybe something like a Power BI, Power BI or something like that. So, okay. uh, so basically, assuming that uh, we are making an app for uh, these CXOs and uh, and uh, although there is a high internal trigger, now you want to basically you want the app to learn what the user wants, right? So it's more of not exactly giving what they already know, and then it's more of what they don't know, right? So basically, you need to learn what the user wants, and the actions which they do on the app is much more uh, interesting than what uh, I mean, just be giving the uh, giving it to the user, right? So, so in order to make uh, uh, basically the actions on the app. So there's an internal trigger which is high, but then uh, we need to provide some external trigger uh, so that they utilize the app in the way probably like we want the, uh, it to be used. So what kind of drivers? So you suggested certain kind of drivers in the Octalysis framework, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I would it would be interesting if you can uh, throw some insights on what would be more interesting to use in this use case. Tough to comment on on the fly. Uh, I mean. Uh, so the CXOs would not be very hands-on on using using uh, different tools, right? So I think if you are looking yeah. at uh, your if you're if you go back to probably BJ Fox model, right? So where you would want mm -hmm. their ability to the when you say internal trigger is high, so I'm assuming what you mean is the motivation is already high because they really want that. Data. Yes, yes. 
yes. the motivation is high so the your play is on the ability side right so okay and so how can you make it more uh, i mean easier for them to uh, consume that data, consume that insight right so uh, it could be i mean you know uh, it could be the way uh, the data is there it could be you know the data is always available on an app or is it i have to go somewhere to access that data or is it that there are uh, even the app i have to open it and do it can it be sent as a notification that okay Got i will look at x data every day uh, instead of that i get a get it get a personalized notification that the revenue for today is x so i really don't so i don't have to do anything i see it in my notification itself right so the ability it, to it. consume that data uh, can be uh, you know made much easier to do so that's what i got it. more of a notification push point. yeah got it thanks 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 next one is from yasha yeah. she's asking uh, any resources to learn these frameworks yeah yeah sure so i mean just google it so you can uh, look at octalysis just google uh, Uh, so octalysis if you see there's lot of lot of things around octalysis you can join their uh, octalysis prime program you will find lot of content lot of content on bj fog youtube uh, go to youtube you will see lot of uh, you know content uh, by videos by bj fog uh, you can if you go to uh, talks at google on youtube you will see uh, a discussion by ukai on uh, octalysis framework the i think he did this uh, he had this speech on uh, at google uh, some office in google in 2016 i think that's so so there's there's a lot of content on that there is no single place but uh, and then there are a lot of books to uh, books to read uh, you can look at uh, thinking fast thinking slow by daniel kahneman uh, then there is a book for product managers i think there is a book by stephen wendel Uh, it talks about uh, behavior design uh, and products which marries both uh, so that's that's the way to look at and uh, you know uh, there are there are there's so much more there are so many books there is hooked as a book uh, there is atomic habits by james clear there is tiny habits by so if you are thinking about habit building products you could look at that so there's there is enough thing if you want to dig into it Uh, we can take one last question. Uh, this one is from Aditya. Can we connect gamification with loyalty program, or yeah. both are different? I think absolutely. Yeah, the gamification is uh, uh, you know loyalty is essentially <laughs> some you know uh, gamification. Uh, it is a gamification of uh, of your say uh, e-commerce website, right? And they give loyalty points. So so these points are essentially helping you to. Uh, Uh, driving your next purchase so uh, however most loyalty programs are are uh, most of it doesn't work there is a reason why it doesn't work because it's it, it is uh, predicated on a simple fixed rewards right which is you do this 100 you buy for 100 rupees you get uh, 5% off 5% as reward points right uh, yeah. however uh, you could look at Uh, there is a famous, uh, I think, uh, Starbucks loyalty program uh, is is famous because they created along with that. So you get, I think, you get some stars every time you uh, every time you do a purchase, and uh, you see your uh, so the visualization is such that you see the stars fall into your uh, like cup, and the slowly the cup fills up every time you make a purchase, and then once the single cup is full, you get a free free coffee, right? So. by doing that what they are doing is it just not points uh, but they are they are also creating a sense of progression and a scarcity right so you are you are you are waiting to see when will the cup you know will fill up to the fill up to the brim right so that so that creates that so uh, but one can create lot more you know uh, bring in lot more creativity in a loyalty program which is not seen in general so okay. give users more choice give user but again it's it's really tough to implement that's why probably you don't see that uh, mm -hmm. give user more choice to uh, earn give user more choice to burn etc okay thank you bharat thanks for the answer sure. um, okay so i think we can wind up the session here i know there are a lot of questions in chat section uh, we can maybe put up all these questions on our slack community and as and when manas gets time 
he can uh, answer these questions i'm mm. adding link to the slack community in chat section so uh, that's all uh, thanks a lot manas uh, for taking out time i hope everyone would have got lot of key insights and takeaways from this session yep i hope so i hope so thank, thank you manas thank you for your time Thank Thanks. You. And for those who missed this session, uh, we'll publish recording of this session on our YouTube channel. I'll share link with all of you in our in our weekly newsletter, so you all will can stay updated with all of these recordings. And for more updates, you can join us like community. We keep on sharing uh, updates about these sessions. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.